what's going on my pretty pandas it's your huggable hipster here and happy end of the year it's the last video of 2017 how are you guys feeling are you feeling good are you feeling good are you guys feeling regenerated shut up phone are you guys feeling regenerated rejuvenated regurgitated that's the wrong word to use i really wanted to make a video for the last day of the year thanking you guys and also giving you guys something a little bit special this year has been a roller coaster as you guys know it's been a roller coaster it's been amazing it's been tedious it's been been interesting it's been wonderful it's been just chaotic it's been amazing so am I doing all of these extravagant things that youtubers are doing no but I pushed and I worked really hard and I have a substantial base that I can call my viewers that anytime that I upload something people are actually gonna look forward to watch it and I think that's pretty darn cool you know I stopped cursing in my videos I took a more genuine approach to things I didn't like the, the fact that I was copying basically other youtubers strategies in order to make it big for myself and that's being honest with you guys like honestly whenever I look back at some of my other videos are cringeworthy because I was trying to put on this facade of oh my god if I do this maybe they'll like me like no just be yourself damn it I'm extraordinarily excited and proud and just amazed at how well this year went 2017 while it was a roller coaster, it was one of my best years so far because I have improved on my writing skills. I'm a freelance writer officially. I have improved on so many things and through YouTube, I was able to channel who I wanna be for my future. Like not many people in their lifetime figure out what it is that they should be doing for their entire life, whether it be their passion or something that they want to do like an office job or whatever it may be. But I found my passion. I found my calling. And I, I want to say that it was pretty much thanks to YouTube. I found what I'm supposed to do with my life. And it's not just entertain. It's not just play video games, but it's to give people a sense of belonging and I want people to understand that you know yeah times are rough times are extremely extremely effing rough but you can get through it you can get through anything that you put your heart and soul and mind to that's what I did whenever I chose to start a YouTube channel which was gosh uh, thinking about it like in April of 2016 so just over a year ago I decided to change my life for the better and hop onto the platform and even though it was rough getting started and then it just skyrocketed i had the trouble with like the subscriber issue and then we jumped right back up to 1200 so it was really so like uh it was a battle but it was a battle that was worth it because like if you guys see my previous videos you guys know what i'm talking about so it was really interesting to see how far the channel has come through all the bs through everything that I've had to go through in order to make this channel work. Like from people telling me that, oh, you're a female, you shouldn't be playing games, to, oh, you know, we don't need any more gamers on the platform, especially ones who don't know what they're talking about. Like, I'm not gonna name names at all. You know, there's no need to. But it's just really interesting to see all the people who doubted me. Now it's like I'm growing on this platform, not astronomically, not like, oh, I'm already at, you know, 100,000 subscribers. No, it's, it's nothing like that. But it's small increments of success. And like, I'm so focused on the journey and how to get there instead of the long run bigger picture. Like that might sound weird because most people are focused on the bigger picture on like, oh, what am I going to reach when I reach the finish line? It's like I'm more focused on the journey that I'm taking because those little things that are in the journey that you're on make it so meaningful and so memorable. Like I remember whenever I first started my YouTube channel, there was, oh gosh, what was her username? Oh gosh. And during Halloween, she named herself Spoopy Potato on Instagram, but she's an awesome girl. You know, she's one of my friends and she made me my first ever fan art. And I will always remember that because that was for the 500 subscriber milestone. And it was just one of the most just amazing things ever because I was like don't you like isn't the fan art reserved for people like you know Ryan Higa and Markiplier and Jacksepticeye and everything like that and it's like I didn't realize that I was actually making an impact on the community I didn't realize that this small group of people who are my pretty pandas you know the, you guys are so humble and you guys are so just <laughs> just awesome people and I want to thank you so much for your humble you know, wisdom, your kindness, your generosity, the way you guys are on the channel towards one another, you guys are so kind. And I want you guys to keep being kind to one another, keep being amazing, keep being, you know, just generous people and carry that over into your real life, you know? Don't just put it on 
YouTube and say, oh, I did my good deed for the day, you know, carry that kindness over into real life and that's where you see the real magic happen. Also, I wanna share some resolutions that I have for the upcoming year. While it's not a resolution, it's something that I've always had in the back of my mind that I'm going to be taking care of today, actually. I am officially deleting my Facebook page. So it's not that it's something I necessarily wanted to do. I just never go onto Facebook anymore. So if you guys really want to look for like the inside scoop, you really want to see the tea of everything, go over to my Twitter, which is at Huggable Hipster. You guys can follow me there. Follow me during my chaos throw, you know, <laughs> through all of my random tweets and everything like that, because I, I tweet a lot. <laughs> I tweet a lot more than I'm on Facebook. Like I maybe I'm on Facebook, maybe like three times a month, even if that anymore. So I usually just go on to talk to people. So I will be deleting my Facebook today. Um, yeah, that's gonna be a thing. The second thing that's gonna be happening for me is that I will be getting my own place this upcoming year, hopefully by October or November, but I will be getting my own place this upcoming year. So be ready for an apartment tour, be ready for me traveling more, all that kind of stuff. I also really, really want to travel out of the country this year. Like I also like, well, this upcoming year since it's the last day of the year, but I'm really excited to do that. And I'm looking forward to going to the UK. I'm looking forward to going to Japan. And I know that I'm saying I'm biting off more than I can chew, but once I put my mind to something, it happens. It's gonna happen. I also want to make a resolution to vlog more because I, I vlogged a little bit this year but I didn't vlog as much as I wanted to because I was always working. I was always doing stuff at home like it was always just thing after thing after thing. So I want to vlog more. I want to do more of that. I want to you know just get out and create more things. I want to create <laughs> as uh, someone who I know on YouTube says create something awesome. Roberto Blake says that and I could not identify with it more because it's so it's so simple to say, but it's so true. Like, you know, just create something awesome. It's, it's, it's simple to the point and it gets it across. It's really awesome. So I want to create things that are more awesome. I want to create more skits. I want to create more cutaways in my videos to get the point across because I remember seeing a lot of cutaways whenever I would watch certain videos and everything. And I'm like, that's such a good idea. I need to do more cutaways in my videos. So expect more cutaways. And that's most of my New Year's resolutions. I think I might come up with more along the road, but that'll just be goals that I will add on to my, you know, yearly to-do list. So to get to the bare bones of what I want to get across in this video, and I thought of it at the last minute because I was originally going to put comments as cutaway scenes, but I didn't have time to do that. So what I'm going to do instead for you guys is I'm going to give you the top three things that you should not do that you should not do at a New Year's Eve party. Like just don't, just avoid it at all cost because sooner or later it will bite you in the butt, karma will get you and you'll be, okay, I shouldn't have done that, but you know, it happened anyway because you should have listened to me, right? Or if you're just sitting at home watching Netflix with your cat and uh, having popcorn, then watch these three rules anyway and you'll know for future reference if you ever do go to a party not to do these things. Number one, number one, people always make this mistake of doing and I feel like it's it's not ever a good thing because I've been to my fair share of the parties of the New Year's and it's not it's this isn't only a bad sign when this happens but you know not to do it over and over and over again. Granted whenever I saw this happening it was college students that were doing it so that gives it some kind of excuse and this rule is for number one don't dress up in a banana costume. Seriously, everyone will know that you're cheesy and that you've had a few tequila shots. It's not the worst thing in the world to be dressed up as a banana, but when you look back on the pictures about 30, 40 years down the road, you're gonna be like, oh my god, why did I dress up as a phallic fruit? Why did I do that? It wasn't fun, it wasn't cute, it wasn't trendy. And yes, there are some females who do dress up in the said banana costume. Just don't do it. Save yourself the humor and save yourself the quite possible uh, picture taking and blackmail that will occur. Not that I've ever dressed up in a banana costume, but I've seen it at concerts, I've seen it at parties, just avoid it at all costs, please. The second thing that you should refrain from doing, and this is more of a safety thing, it isn't more of a like, oh my god, this is so embarrassing kind of thing, don't go alone to a New Year's Eve party. Seriously, just don't go alone, okay? Strange guys who are drunk will try to hit on you. It's it's not a good thing. I've gone alone once to one and it will, it, let's just say I had one guy whispering in my ear, do you let me in a colada? It's not fun. It really is, it is. <laughs> as much as it sounds funny, it's, it's, oh good lord. It sounds creepy. Like, if you're doing a whisper challenge, it's funny, but it's so creepy. If you're that guy that whispers, do you want pina coladas? What's wrong with you? 
What's Did your mother drop you on your head when you were younger? What's wrong with you? The third and last thing that you should never do, and I mean never do, at a New Year's Eve party. And on this to the point of holy moly, don't ever do this, please. Now, this has never happened to me. Just putting this out there. When it comes New Year's and you don't have a bae, you don't have a person, you don't have a BF, you don't have a GF, you don't have that one person to share your harmonies with. You don't have that one person to share your pina colada with. You don't have one person to share that frappe mocha hallelujah with. Don't try to kiss the random person that you see when the clock strikes 12. Whenever you try to do that and you're drunk, you just fall straight on your booty and there's no one there to come pick you up because they want to leave you in the sorrow that you've built for yourself, honestly. If you guys have ever seen that happen, if you guys have ever seen any of that kind of stuff happen, leave it down in the comments below. I would love to get your input and to see those horror stories and laugh at them while you uh, once typed them out with such courage. But those are my three rules that you should not do at a New Year's Eve party ever, like just ever, like just stop. What do you, no, don't, don't do it. I'm really tempted to say just don't go to a New Year's party and just sit at home and relax, but I'm going to a New Year's Eve party today so that would be kind of hypocritical of me. So uh, wish me luck, cross my fingers and every other extremity. Oh, trust me, if I have any New Year's Eve stories at all to tell you guys, I'll probably tell you in the next video right away. But knowing me, I'm extremely safe whenever it comes to New Year's parties. Like I don't, <laughs> I don't go out of my comfort zone. Like, if I'm going, I'm gonna go with someone. That way I can stay in my bubble with them because I don't like people, necessarily. <laughs> it's not that I don't like people. I don't like s I don't like most people. Except for you guys. You guys are, you know, fan baby dozy. You guys are great. You guys are the bee's knees. You guys are the cheese to my unagi. But, happy end of the year. I hope you guys have enjoyed my videos. So if you guys like my face and what I do, please be sure to subscribe and hit the bell down below because I make videos every damn day. Happy end of the year and happy almost new years, you guys. I love you all. Thank you so much. Stay casually nerdy, and I will talk to you all in the next video. Peace, you guys.